What we just put out in our 43101 uh, maiden resource estimate is also the thickness of potash horizon in the north. It, it reaches 70 to 80 meters, which is incredible uh, to, to give you a comparison to many other parts of the world. We're talking about 20, 25 meters. And in the southern part of the project, because we have historical data, it may be double that thickness. Hello to those tuning in to the Assay TV, where we start our new year, joined by Farhad Abbasov, the chairman of Millennial Potash. Millennial Potash is a company with a long history of fast-tracking projects led by the same board and management team that has built and successfully exited multiple resource companies, including the prominent Millennial Lithium, Alana Potash, and Potash One. So welcome, Farhad. Thank you for joining us here on the Assay TV. Great to see you again. Hi, Katie. Good to see you too. Right, so just to kick things off, for those that aren't so familiar with Millennial Potash, can you just give us a bit of an overview of the company? Sure. Millennial Potash has been developing its uh, Banyo Potash project in Gabon, its previously explored project. And we started with this uh, project about 10 months ago. Um, mm -hmm. And the, basically, Millennial Potash team is the same team that has built and sold quite a few uh, projects in the past, including Millennial Potash and a couple of a certain millennial lithium and a couple of potash projects in the past. Excellent. And shall we look a bit deeper into the team? Can you tell us a little bit more about the expertise on that team and what's made it so successful? Well, of course, Katie. Look, um, you know, this is our third potash project. So the previous two potash projects were in Saskatchewan in Canada and the other one was in Ethiopia and Africa. We started with those projects basically from the same level of development as this project is at now meaning for early stage uh, exploration. And we took them all the way through all the, the development stages. You know, we've drilled it out, we've confirmed the resource, then we've uh, finished, they completed a feasibility study. And after securing mining permits, we actually sold the projects to large potash producers. Potash One was sold to a German potash producer called Kaidon Salts. They actually built that project. Now they produce over 2 million tons uh, of potash out of that project. And then uh, Alina Potash was sold to an Israeli company called Israel Chemicals. Uh, again, at the same stage of development after mining permit was secured. And the most recent project was also called Millennial, but it was Millennial Lithium. And that mm -hmm. project was in Argentina. It was a Brian, Lith Brian Lithium project. And the same thing, we took the company from early stage, from about $30 million market cap, all the way uh, to $490 million when we had a bidding war in early 2022, and we sold it to a company called Lithium America. So we know um, potash sector specifically very well. And that's why we chose this one in Gabon, because we think that it has all the characteristics of one of our previous successful projects. Excellent. Very impressive. Um, so let's move on to your news releases. You've had some pretty exciting um, news regarding a main resource estimate for your flagship project. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, some of the highlights there? Uh, sure, sure, Katie. Look, um, we, as I mentioned, we started with this project la last March, so it's been only um, a, a short 10 months, but we've developed this project in a record time. Uh, we mobilized, we built our uh, camp there in, in summer, and then we started drilling in September, October. So this is a culmination of the first stage of our work, um, and it is impressive numbers. Uh, so we have both indicated an inferred resource now, this is a main resource estimate, of course, all 43101 compliant. We're looking at 650 million tons of potash in the ground at a grade of about 16% KCL, that is indicated, and then inferred of another 1.1 billion tons. Now, this is just, uh, to put this in context, this covers less than 5% of our entire project area. Um, you know, our project is it covers about 1,200 square kilometers. This is really tiny, and we've drilled only two drill holes. So you can imagine the upside potential here, and yes. this is just in the northern part of the project. That sounds very impressive. Um, and obviously, all of these things cost money. So you recently, in December, closed a private placement. Um, what are we using the funds there for moving forward? So look, we we're very fortunate to raise uh, uh, a little bit of money last December. As you know, the junior uh, mining market has been going through challenges in the last few months. Uh, but we did get uh, quite a bit of capital last year, primarily from large um, you know, family offices and uh, individuals and institutions who believe in the team and, of course, in the project. And that's all earmarked for exploration um, stage at this point. Uh, the further drilling, a preliminary economic assessment that will be coming out this, uh, this quarter. Um, and then, of course, whatever is left we will go into further uh, works, including a uh, feasibility study and, its, and other things. 
Great. And just to circle back a bit, the, you mentioned the projects in Gabon. Um, can you give us a bit of an insight into what it's like operating there as a mining jurisdiction? So look, I mean, before we get involved with any project, we do quite a bit of due diligence, not only on the project itself, but on the country, on the jurisdiction. And we really like Gabon for a number of reasons. One, of course, is that it's been a very stable jurisdiction, both politically and economically. It's a well-known oil and gas jurisdiction, um, and it is probably one of the wealthiest countries in Africa. Um, but the second thing was their desire and their intentions, and of course, all the policies directed at actually opening up the mining sector. So about four years ago, they overhauled their mining laws, and that has brought in significant foreign direct investment, including large companies such as Aramid out of France, Fortescue out of Australia, and so forth. And we were welcome when we came in as well. Um, and we see this type of support at all levels. Since uh, we got involved with this project, we met with all the key ministers, including ministers of uh, economy, min mines, of course, um, environment. And I personally met with the uh, new president, His Excellency, yes, uh, last December. And that was very important because, you know, we could hear it directly from the ministers and the president that they really want us to advance this project to the next level. So they're very keen on this project getting to uh, the permitting stage, a mining permitting stage, and of course to a construction, uh, because this is going to be one of the big drivers of economic growth in this part of the country. Excellent. And you just mentioned the junior markets. Obviously, they've been a bit turbulent, uh, to say the least, in the last year. Um, can you explain the cost advantage of Millennial Potash for any investors out there? Okay, we have a number of uh, advantages here. So the cost structure is going to be low for number of reasons. One, we're going to use solution mining for extraction. So solution mining is different, of course, from conventional methods, whereas we basically inject saline solution or salt water into your body. Um, you, you dissolve it and you pump it back to the surface and then you go through processing. So that will keep our CapEx low. And it also has a minimal environmental impact because of the nature of the works, of course. Um, and we also have some other advantages or some other factors contributing to lower cost structure. Uh, such as the thickness of potash horizon. So what we just put out in our 43101 uh, maiden resource estimate is also the thickness of potash horizon in the north. It, it reaches 70, 80 meters, which is incredible um, to, to give you a comparison to many other parts of the world where we're talking about 20, 25 meters. And in the southern part of the project, because we have historical data, it may be double that thickness. So that will also translate into lower sustaining capex and operating costs because basically think about this in solution money you create caverns and the larger the cavern the lower your cost because you don't have to actually drill and replenish this cavern so with the same number mm -hmm. of large caverns you can operate for many years without any need to replenish them um, and this, the third thing is of course the location of the project we're right on the coast of gabon the vast majority of, um, of potash basins in the world are smack in the middle of continents. So they're very far from ports, very far from coast. Here, we can actually have a huge shipping advantage, not only to Africa itself, but also to other parts of the, of the world. So when you look at this project, it is uniquely positioned, whereas we have lower cost structure in terms of CapEx, OPEX, sustaining CapEx, as well as shipping, uh, shipping cost advantage. So Lillian, as a bit of a roundup to this discussion, what um, is the company's development plan moving forward this year? What should investors expect to see from the company in the coming months? So Katie, it, it's been pretty eventful last year for us uh, and the last several months, I should say. And going forward this year is going to be critical for us as well, because, you know, the year started, of course, with 43101, the resource estimate. Uh, but we're going to continue with the PEA this quarter as well. So the PEA preliminary economic assessment will be based on the resource estimate that we just put out. Um, and then after that, we're planning to drill a bit more in the north because we think we just scratched the surface. As I mentioned, we just uh, sank only two drill holes. So we're going to drill a bit more in the north and put out another revised uh, 43101 resource estimate. And then in the middle of the year, we're planning to go into a feasibility study and concurrently with it, we'll start on environmental uh, uh, studies as well. Well, it certainly sounds like there's a big year ahead for Millennium Potash. And thank you so much for spending some time with us today to share the company. Thanks so much, Katie.